sir. One moment, Mr. Curl. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I call the uh, Performance Monitoring Auditing Committee uh, meeting to order. Today is October the 12th, 2021, and it is uh, 105 p.m. Um, uh, right now, we have uh, committee presentations and updates. Uh, do we have anybody? Anything? Chairman Leggett. Yes, ma'am. Before you begin with the uh, proposed agenda items, I'd like to remind you that uh, Ms. Dumas sent some additional items out on yesterday that will be included in this presentation for agenda. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're ready to move on. Yes, ma'am. If, uh, if we can move forward. Okay. I got we have proposed agenda items for October twenty sixth. Um, you you have you you have somebody to read that for you, Miss Raglan, yes, or you want yes, to do it? Yes, sir. We'll um, Miss Miss Roundtree will begin with their presentations. Thank you. You're muted, Shalanda. Okay, there we go, sorry. Good afternoon, directors. Um, we will begin um, with the committee report for bus and bus facilities grant application. We are bringing this before the board to um, request um, permission to proceed with a application for bus and bus facilities. The projects that we are considering applying for are diesel buses and also a multi-purpose bus storage and maintenance facility. This application is due November 19th. No, you said due November 19th? Yes. Okay, so is, is there anything that we should object to or? Um, no, the proposed projects, we just kind of, you know, the board has to approve all of our grant application submissions before we proceed. Um, and just if you have any kind of reservations at all about the projects that we're looking for, um, applying for, for this particular grant. What's the amount of the grant? I might've missed it. What's the amount that we're, we're gonna be applying for? Well, we're, we have not identified an amount, um, Dr. Robinson, at this point, we are pulling the numbers to um, identify the number of diesel buses that we will be applying for as well as uh, the maintenance facility, but we will have that at governance. So, so let me ask you a question with the, um, you know, we got the electric buses. Yes, ma'am. So, and I thought we was trying to be, um, what do you call it, uh, environmental friendly. So why are we looking to do diesel? Well, Dr. Robinson, it's my understanding um, that a few years ago, um, initially we had determined or discussed or the board had decided on going 100% um, electric that did change. Um, so we're looking at kind of diversifying our fleet to um, have both electric and diesel buses. And currently the bus we're running now are diesel buses? Yes, they're diesel and we have a few hybrids. So I, I guess the only question I have is, um, but this grant is only for diesel buses, it's not for electric buses? Um, this is not for electric buses. Yes, it's bus and bus facilities. So typically with this type of grant, um, any type of buses other than um, electric, which we normally apply for low no for those type of opportunities um, and bus facilities. Uh, so I, I guess our, our, our desire to um, save the environment I, don't, I guess I, I don't know. I guess I'd be a little bit concerned. I know we need, I guess we need to increase the number of buses in our fleet. That, that's, that's one of the issues that we have. That's correct. Yeah, it's kind of replacement. Um, as a state of good repair, we have a bus replacement schedule that we are um, trying to stay in compliance with and just making sure that according to the schedule that we are keeping in line with replacing the buses as scheduled, that those are quickly approaching or have reached the end of their useful life. And then you, you said that at one point the board agreed to go to an electric, but that changed. What changed? Well, it changed with not going 100% electric until 
we start getting these rolling and seeing how it does with our current fleet, just how our operations. Did Dr. Robinson, I think the decision was made not to go totally electric because we haven't tested the electric buses yet. So we didn't want to put all of our eggs in one basket, if you will, if the electric buses were not the best suit or best fit for Chatham area transit. So for that reason, a decision was made to continue to purchase some diesel buses as well as operate and uh, assess the electric buses. It does not mean that we won't order the electric buses in the future. But I think the main thing with this grant is the maintenance facility that we are in. Oh, we need so badly a maintenance facility so that we can properly house and maintain the electric buses that we do have. Yes, and, and, I, can, and I, I know everything A you know, they age out and they become less efficient. So to replace them, you know, I, I'm clear, but I was only questioning, I know that at one point we were talking about electric buses. My only question was, you know, what changed? And I understand now what you guys are saying has changed. So, I, you know, I don't have an issue with that at all. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead, Ms. Roundtree. Okay. Next on our agenda is the American Rescue Plan additional funds. And so for this grant, it's a competitive grant that we're also bringing before the board. Um, and it is in addition to um, what we're going to be already allocated, what has been allocated for our ARP funding. This is for additional operating assistance. Um, the deadline is November the 8th for this application. And we're just requesting the board support to um, submit for this grant also. That one I think is awesome. I'm I'm good with that. One. Okay. That's just me now. Any other directors? No one else. No, I'm comfortable. With it also, oh. I'm in okay. agreement. Also. Okay. Directors, I will bring before you also the route planning and restoration program. Um, this is another grant opportunity. The deadline for this grant is November 15th. Um, and it will be very similar to what uh, Kat had before with the Let's Go project. And that's just kind of a redesign of our routes. So we are asking the board's um, support of this grant. Um, there is 100% funding for that, that we always like to hear. Um, so it's just a matter of us, you know, submitting this project. So, so, so with that, this grant I was a little bit confused with. The, when we do the route planning restoration program, explain exactly to me what does that entail? Yes, it's a redesign of our current routes that we have. So it's kind of an assessment of our routes and then looking at redesign. Um, a few years ago, Dr. Robinson, there was a Let's Go project that was very similar. And so that's what this is. It will be, um, you know, just kind of an, an um, opportunity to kind of resurrect this project and submit it for 100% um, funding. This part, that project or is similar. So, so the, the amount that's available is 25 million. That's correct. And we don't know yet how much we're gonna be asking for? No, we don't. We do have some, um, some kind of preliminary numbers on what the um, previous let's go cost. And that's kind of, you know, we're looking at the ballpark to apply for that. So I guess, you know, really one of the main purposes is just to kind of ensure, make sure that the board is in support of us moving forward. Um, previously, the Let's Go project was suspended. And so we just want to know, you know, if the board is interested in us um, moving forward with the route redesign and submitting for this great opportunity. Shalonda, with, uh, with the route redesign, is, does that mean that... Uh... I'm trying to get a good thought of what the redesign. I know what redesign me, but are we going to extend certain routes, or are we just doing a? Uh, uh, we're just going to look and see how it would look if we extend routes, or or as people are moving into certain areas, how can we move bus services? Yes, it will be a comprehensive review of all of our routes, so that may 
involve um, extending some routes and then looking into areas where uh, we you know, may have not are not covering now um, so that we can look at um, possibly extending those routes or just kind of redesigning how we're providing service. Okay, because so, I know people were asking how we're we gonna be able to uh, help people get to the fair this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, uh, Director Leggett, we've also had um, conversation about, you know, the area out, um, I think it's 95 and 204, there's, you know, development out there. And so those are kind of, you know, pockets that we would hope that this route design would cover. Just, you know, there's been a lot of um, development uh, with our routes and in the city mm -hmm. that our routes have not been changed in quite some time. So this is just an opportunity to make sure that it's equitable and that we're providing services where it's needed. Thank you. So, so the grant would just provide us with the monies to start looking at. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, Dr. Robinson. Um, it would be the funding for the study for that. And then, of course, um, you know, it will be involve public meetings, you know, board involvement, input, and then we'll just, you know, come back before the board to decide our next steps with implementation. Is, is out there, let's go for it. Is this study census-based? Yes, well, I know that census is involved in that. Um, that was definitely a part of it before with Let's Go. So they will uh, take that in consideration, absolutely. Do we have a timeline? Um, no, sir, not at this time. The uh, deadline for this uh, grant submission is November 15th. So with the board's blessing, we'll go ahead and start working on that and get that submitted and then keep the board updated on the next steps. I have one other question. Um, with, with us adding routes possibly, would this cut out some routes? Perhaps. Also it will be, um, you know, it would be recommendations before the you know, committees, the board, the community, everyone will have a stake in a say so in what we should do. Um, but we'll bring that before the board and decide. Ms. Ragland, did you want to add on to that? I was just going to say that this is just a study that will provide a blueprint for us. If we, if the board decided to move forward in that direction, then that would be the decision of the board. And, and, and I, I would agree with going ahead with, with the grant, but I would also suggest that you take a closer look at let go and see where the, the areas of concern was for the board so that we don't have to repeat, you know, to say, just make sure we kind of cover our bases with what we're going to do. Because the whole idea is what Ms. Roundtree talked about, because Chatham County has changed, the configuration has changed. Yes, so the cat needs to change, you know, as far as routes yes. and you know, and making sure that the folks who really need the buses, the buses in those areas where they have not been before. So, um, yes, ma'am. So, yeah, so I think we should apply. And, and what I do appreciate also is the, is the um, timeliness of, of you guys identifying these grants and bring them to the board. Yes, ma'am. We don't want to miss, you know, any opportunity. If, you know, if we don't apply, we don't know if we'll get it. Right. So so I appreciate the timeliness that you guys are endeavoring to do as far as these grants are concerned. Okay. Thank you. you can, go ahead. You can continue, Ms. Roundtree. Okay. Next is the uh, Georgia Coronavirus State Recovery Fund Grant Program. Um, this, unlike the federal, this is a state grant opportunity that we've been presented. Um, and we are looking at applying. The project is a low-income fair um, study as well as pilot program. Um, so the intent of that is just to kind of assess um, where we are with our fares, just to kind of have an in-depth study, a comprehensive study to address our fares that has not been done um, at CAT in quite some time. So our fares have remained the same. And also um, we're kind of looking at the idea of implementing or the feasibility of a low income fare. Um, currently, we do have some fair programs that offer discounts, um, but just with the status of what's happening with um, the COVID and then how it's affecting income, we think that this is an opportunity to kind of do a study so that we can have some recommendations of how to you know, proceed or move forward with implementing perhaps a permanent low-income fair. That, that was added 
I don't see it on my list of, of um it says uh Georgia Coronavirus State Fiscal Recovery Fund grant program. Is that was one that was sent on yesterday, Dr. Oh, Robinson. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but but you know, we because we did the veterans um discount fair, which I thought was great. And um and I think this, you know, if we can get it to help families, you know, yes, working families, you know, and, and get more people on the bus, you know, it, it might yes. help. So, yeah. I'm going to. Okay. Director Leggett, you're okay with that also? Yeah. And Director yes. Adams? Yeah, because I, 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 I thought that that would in, uh, encourage ridership, like the, Dr. Robinson said. And um, are we targeting, because I think we already have something for the. Uh, for the challenged, um, for uh, other people to get on the bus, but to for low income families to use the bus and get around. And now we're talking about, you know, taking the bus in different places that'll help people get to work. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. Now, now, I know you said one was 100 percent, but the others require a match. The, other um, the bus and bus facilities, Dr. Robinson, does require a 20 percent match. We do have that match. Um, included in our SPLOS funding. Okay, and last is the Microtransit Service, MOU. Um, so at our previous board meeting, we presented to the board um, a potential partnership with the city of Savannah to take over the Microtransit Service. It was for the issuance of the RFP. Um, this is requesting the review of the MOU um, currently, the city is reviewing it just to see um, if, if everything meets their um, standards and just their understanding. Um, we will have that presented, hopefully, by the governance meeting, um, so for the board to review. But this is just um, so that we can move forward with the MOU, considering if the city and CAT agrees to, to everything regarding um, the microtransit service. So will we get a copy of that MOU? Absolutely, absolutely, Dr. Robinson. The city is currently reviewing it. Sean Brandon is reviewing it right now. He had some questions. And so um, hopefully we'll get that by the government so that I can include that and send that to all board members. And what about legal? Legal has reviewed it. Okay. Ms. Bell, that concludes my agenda items. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roundtree. We go to uh, Ms. Cutter with her budget modification presentation. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I have two um, submission items I'd like to share with you today. Um, I'll do the bus, bus wash first. Um, if you all recall, back in June of this year, uh, the board approved the issuance of an RFP for a bus wash system. Um, the proposals have come in with Westmatic uh, ranking uh, number one, and we are recommending that we award to this company. Um, you should have received the rating forms that accompanied uh, this recommendation with the vendor points. Um, this uh, system that we are proposing, uh, it can handle um, washing of all vehicles, including the paratransit vehicle. If you recall, the bus wash system has been down for quite some time. And this is uh, something that is really needed to help maintain our vehicles in a state of good repair. And the, and the money is there in the budget. Yes, it is. Um, your um, report should give you the grant funding uh, that will um, pay for this procurement. And the local match will be handled by SPLOS. Any questions? Do we have a timeline? Uh, are we going to bring this to the board at the next meeting, or do we have a timeline uh, after that? 
Yes, it'll it'll be on the October uh, board agenda for approval. And um, by governance, um, I'll give you an update as to the length of the project, the time frame for completion. Yeah, because it's needed yeah, for the that'll be a, a a major plus to have those um those bus wash and just drive through and that take care of all of our vehicles at one time. Yes, absolutely. Director Adams, any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Sure I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, fiscal year 22 budget modifications. Um, we have, um, well, the interim CEO has brought forward uh, some reclassifications uh, and position uh, eliminations uh, to make the reclasses uh, revenue neutral. In accordance with uh, the budget policy, uh, these reclassifications and or modifications have to be bought before the board for approval. Uh, prior to uh, governance, you'll have more information uh, outlining which positions are impacted, uh, the budgetary amounts, uh, all of that detail so that uh, you will be able to understand the movements um, from one department to another and the budgetary impacts. Yeah, and, and, you know, for me to put this on the consent agenda would be something that I couldn't support at this point, not having seen anything. That's right. So um, I would want to see it before, you know, I cast a vote one way or the other. Yes, you all will have it um, by the governance meeting, and that gives you a week before you officially vote uh, to, you know, impose any questions that you may have. Okay. I just wanted to add to Dr. Robinson that it is a budget neutral. We are, we are not looking to increase the budget at all, but because these positions were not approved in the in your budget that has been approved, we need to bring it before the board before we make any changes. Sounds good, sounds really good. Okay. Is there any other questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you. And I have one item that I omitted to place on the agenda, and it was actually the agreement for payment of incentives or bonuses I sent it to the board, to all of you on September 24th. It was sent as part, as an exhibit to a memo that I sent out. And the it was labeled Exhibit A, Memorandum of Agreement between Chatham Area Transit and Amalgamated Transit. I just wanted to make clear that this agreement is necessary and required by the FTA, if Chatham Area Transit ever seeks reimbursement of any funds, it's not attached to any particular practice or policy. It's just a general agreement stating that CAT has in place um, a agreement to provide bonuses or incentive payments to employees when there is an emergency or an, a crisis. It's just a general agreement, and I would like to have that approved in the case or in case we do move forward with any type of future incentive or bonuses. This will have to be in place before we could go to the FTA to seek any type of reimbursement. That has been the issue in the past with the uh, FTA and CRISA fund reimbursement. We did not have the agreement in place. And I would just like to put the agreement in place. Again, I said it was sent to the board on September 24th as a memo and it's listed as exhibit A, but it was attached to other things, but I want to separate it as an individual general agreement at this time so that we can have it as a matter of record. And can you send that to us again, just, you know, because September, um, you know, I I can't promise you I remember what that was. So. Yeah, 
I did. I can send it again. I'll send it again as a separate send document. Separate as, send it as a separate item, item again. But now, but I'm hearing you say that we should have had it, but we never had it in place. We never had it. And that's the reason why FTA is saying, we're not going to reimburse you if you do this or you do that. You don't yeah. have anything in place. And so we need to go ahead and put it in place. It's Whether we decide to do something or not, yeah. we need to have it in place. If it's an FTA requirement, I just don't understand how we were able to get away with it for so long. But. Well, we, we really haven't had an opportunity to seek reimbursement of funding until this pandemic. So but it's my, taught us a lot. Yeah, but my point is, if it's a requirement, you know, and if we were to be in total compliance with FTA, they would have, you know, kind of yanked our chain and said, you know, this is one of the things that you guys are missing because they always give us these points, you know, how well we're doing and if this never came up. You know, well, I, and, and it probably isn't something that has been longstanding, Dr. Robertson, but in light of the pandemic, and so many transit properties providing incentives and bonuses is become a hot issue. Yeah, yeah. All right. But I will send that as a separate document. Okay. And, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And if if there are any other questions, um, Chairman Leggett, I would like to, at this time, under new business, introduce Ms. Shaka White, Can who is our. Things? I'm sorry, can we do old business first? I have one. I'm sorry. I have I just have one question about old business. Oh yes, ma'am. And that's that's the um that's the disposal of vehicles to nonprofits. Remember the band and, the band that yes, we talked about? I saw the application. Did we get any responses to that? We did. Uh, we did. And um I'll let Miss uh, Roundtree speak to that, but we got several, we were surprised at how many applications we did receive. Okay. Ms. Roundtree, if you would. Yes, Dr. Robinson, um, we are currently reviewing the applications. Um, the deadline for the submission of all applications has not um, come up yet. Um, and we have uh, established a committee. Um, once that is done and they review all applications, we will um, contact and present the uh, selected recipient for that uh, that bus for that donated bus. So what? So what's your deadline for the application to be submitted? Um, let's see. I said you said that to me this morning too. I did. <laughs> uh, let me see. If I can find it. It's been out there a while. You know, you, you guys did a good job getting it out there. Yes. Let's see. There is a, a, a timeline that they have for right. Okay. That's timeline as well. Something you can't put your hands on right away. That's fine. I just want okay. to know, I just I really want to know where it was and the kind of response you guys received. I think that's awesome. Yes, Dr. Robinson. Um the applications are due October 29th. That's all applications. Okay. And then show the announcement was the November 4th. The yes. announcement. Yes, the 1st of November, we'll make the announcement. Yes. Oh, wow. That's a quick turnaround. Yes. Okay. But the applications were very thorough. So it's just, it was just a matter of the committee getting together to meet and to go through them all. And I think, if I can recall, we had seven or eight applications yes. that we currently have received. That's correct. And Ms. Bell, if I could correct, um, the... Applications are due October 29th. The review of the applications and awardee is November the 11th, and it will be um, award announced on November 22nd. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds more realistic than November 1st. <laughs> okay. I just remember seeing November in the timeline. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. all I Thank you. And, uh, as I was saying, I'd like to introduce to you members of the board who are present at this time, our new <clears throat> Chief Human Resources Officer, Shaka White. Uh, hi, Shaka. Um, well, good afternoon <laughs> now. How is everyone doing? Good afternoon. Please hi. introduce yourself to the members of the board that are present. 
Well, my name is Shaka White. Um, as as uh, Ms. Valerie said, I am the new Chief Human Resource Officer. Um, I am very excited uh, to join uh, this organization. Been a part of it, uh, uh, not internally, but um, my father used to work here many years ago. He, Ms. Val, you remember my father. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember being a little kid riding the bus. So I am so excited to bring my uh, expertise and um, not just regular human resources, but strategic planning and looking at an organization and taking it to um, another level. Um, so I look uh, I look forward to working with the board as well as with um, the agency to take the, the agency where we know it can go. Well, I want to say your resume is very impressive. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I even, I even I said I would love to meet you face to face. Absolutely. Seeing your Zoom is awesome. It's awesome. Well, you <laughs> let me know when you feel comfortable and you feel safe um, and you would like to meet. We can absolutely do that. It would be my honor. But I just want to say welcome and thank uh, you. You're joining a great, great team. And I think all you can do is make it better, but it's a great team. Thank you. Ms. Val has done a fantastic job in the interim position. And I mean, you just got a great group of people that's going to be there. And they have longevity as well. And that's the good part about it. Yes, ma'am. So yes, ma'am. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we Does have anyone you? have any questions for me? Oh, well, ma'am, just welcome to the organization. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. We hope that we'll have an opportunity for Ms. White to speak with the full board in the near future to discuss some possibilities um, or some necessities uh, with HR to expound on them even more so. And that's all that I have, Chairman Leggett. Is there any other new business, any old business, anything anybody want to interject before we move forward? There's nothing. Our next meeting is October 19, 2021. That's our governance meeting. And October 26, 2021 is our regular board meeting. Um, uh, if there's nothing else uh, pressing that we need to speak on, I just want to let everybody know that you're doing an awesome job. I thank you for what you have done and, and what we plan on doing moving forward. But please, please be safe. Uh, do what you have to do. Uh, put your mask on. Uh, encourage other people to get vaccinated. And uh, make sure you talk to your family members because we're losing a lot of people. And, and Ms. Raglan, I pray for you also. And please take care of yourself because you need it. So, you. <laughs> so if there's nothing else, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.